pride, greed, lust, envy, gluttony, wrath, and sloth. These are the seven deadly sins as declared by Pope Gregory I in the 6th century AD. We all try our best to steer clear of sinning, just to stay out of trouble or to save our mortal souls. Therefore, you might assume that the Pope of the Catholic Church should be the embodiment of what it means to be good. They do, after all, have a direct connection to God. But you might be surprised to learn that not all popes avoided the seven deadly sins. In fact, some popes even went as far as to indulge and enjoy every single one of them. Let's take a look at some of the most sinful popes and the atrocities they committed. The craziest part is that there is at least one pope we know of who ended up in hell. Since there are seven deadly sins, we thought it appropriate to talk about seven sinful popes. The things they did would have gotten any normal person excommunicated from the church. But when you're God's right-hand man, one of the perks is being able to do pretty much whatever you want, for a time. We're going to start with a pretty mild sinner and work our way through the popes who did things you won't believe. The horrors you're about to witness were done by men who believed to be closer to God than anyone else. Well, by politicians of the time, anyway. It's a cringe-worthy thought. Pope John XII was born in Rome with the name Ottaviano. He was elected as head of the Catholic Church in 1955 and reigned until 1967. John XII was one of the youngest popes to ever be elected. Records of his birth date are disputed, but he became pope when he was between 18 and 25 years old. John ran the church like you'd expect a young man full of power to, full of sin. John XII threw lavish parties with indulgences such as alcohol and orgies. For a man who was supposed to remain celibate and give his entire life to God, he may have enjoyed earthly pleasures a little too much. He consistently lied to the cardinals and church members about his sinful activities and continued on with them until his death. He sold lands owned by the church to wealthy associates to collect money and favors to support his frat boy lifestyle. Unfortunately for John XII, his promiscuity eventually caught up with him. It's said that he was killed by a man in cold blood when he found the Pope in bed with his wife. At least John XII died doing what he loved. Popes are supposed to be forgiving. They absolve people of their sins. But what happens when a pope is so unforgiving that he becomes sinful? Then you get Pope Stephen VI. He was voted into the papacy in 896 but lasted less than a year as the Holy Father. In the little time he was pope, he didn't do anything of note that was good for the church or its people. Instead, Stephen VI spent his papacy getting revenge on his predecessor who had just passed away. Pope Stephen did not get along with Pope Formosus, who held the position before him. They constantly were in disagreement, and Stephen VI took it very personally. When he became the pope, Stephen had his predecessor's body dug up and had his corpse stand trial for blasphemy. Obviously, this was not a fair trial, and accounts state that it was pretty much just Stephen VI screaming at the old pope's corpse for a couple of hours. For Moses' only crime was that he agreed with a different faction of cardinals within the Vatican than Stephen VI did. For Moses' corpse was given a lawyer during the trial who remained silent the entire time, which was probably the smart choice. After Stephen VI found Formosus guilty, he had all of his vestments removed, cut off three fingers on his right hand, and dragged the corpse through the streets of Rome until it was finally dumped in the Tiber River. Stephen VI was clearly not a forgiving person, but neither were his enemies. Less than a year after becoming the Pope, Stephen VI was strangled to death by members of the opposing faction, bringing his short reign over the Catholic Church to an end. You probably heard of or remember the Medici family from your history classes. So it should come as no surprise that Pope Leo X, born Giovanni de' Medici, is on our list for the popes who committed the greatest sins. The Medici family had tastes for the finer things in life, and even though Leo X was supposed to give up all worldly possessions to become the pope, he decided to indulge in greed and gluttony instead. Leo X commissioned, bought, and sold massive amounts of artwork during the Renaissance. He did not use his family's wealth, however. Instead, he used the church's money to pay for his expensive taste in the fine arts. This caused the Catholic Church to go almost completely bankrupt. Leo X was going through money faster than the church was bringing it in. That being said, some of the greatest works of art, especially those created by Raphael, were funded by Leo X. In order to bring more money to the church, Leo began selling indulgences. Indulgences are basically the forgiveness of sin from the church in exchange for money. For those who were wealthy enough, deadly sins were no longer a hindrance. All they needed to do was spend a little money, buy an indulgence, and instantly they'd be forgiven by the church. It was definitely a shady business. So shady, in fact, that this is what caused Martin Luther to write his 95 Theses and pen them to the door of the church. Pope Leo X had gone too far and had become too sinful. Large groups of people broke away from the Catholic Church during his reign and started the Protestant religion. 
You have to ask yourself, is there anything more sinful than selling forgiveness? Like Leo X, Pope Urban VI also tore people away from the church. However, what happened under Pope Urban was so much worse. He was born Bartolomeo Pregnano in Naples, Italy, and became the Pope in 1378. He continued to lead the Catholic Church until 1389. It was under Urban VI that the Western Schism occurred. The dismantling of the Catholic Church ended with two popes competing for the right to be one true ruler ordained by God. Leading up to Pope Urban VI's papacy, there had been different factions in the upper ranks of the church. Pope Urban intensified the divide by using extreme violence to remove those who opposed him. If a group of cardinals did not agree with Urban VI, he would sentence them to death, using brutal killings to send a message. It was recorded that when watching his adversaries be tortured, he complained that their screams weren't loud enough. It should come as no surprise to you that killing and torturing are considered sins. Urban VI's vicious behavior led to wars being waged, people assassinated, and the congregants losing their faith in the church. All of this was due to Pope Urban VI's power lust. Another sinful pope was Pope Benedict IX, who was described as a demon from hell. He was so vile and sinful that he actually had his papacy stripped from him. However, he somehow kept weaseling his way back into power. Benedict IX's first reign over the Catholic Church lasted from 1032 to 1044. He had been grinding Catholic followers into the ground, trying to get every ounce of money and resources out of them by using any means necessary. This often resulted in violence and death. In 1044, the people of Rome were so fed up with this sinful behavior that they rebelled and drove Benedict out of the city. For many cardinals and members of the church, this was a relief. However, in 1045, Benedict IX came back and reclaimed the papacy. He quickly found out that the church would not provide him enough money to continue the lifestyle he'd become accustomed to, so he sold the papacy to his godfather, who then became Pope Gregory VI. Again, the whole of the Catholic world sighed in relief, but they were not rid of Benedict IX quite yet. In 1047, he once again came back to reclaim the title of Pope. After a year, the people of the Catholic faith had had enough. Benedict IX was merciless and clearly did not take the responsibilities of being Pope seriously. A German army led the charge to remove Benedict IX as Pope once and for all. Many people joined the army in hopes that this would be the last they'd see of Pope Benedict. He was successfully removed from the papacy and lived the rest of his life as a priest at the Abbey of Grotta Frata. Pope Alexander VI was a Borgia. That's right, he was part of the family that has their own series about corruption and sin on Showtime. Alexander VI lived a life full of every single one of the deadly sins. He already had the groundwork set by his uncle, Pope Calixtus III, when he bought the papacy. Nepotism ran deep in the Borgia family. Continuing on with this tradition, Alexander put family members in positions of power all around him. When a spot was filled by someone less sympathetic to his cause, Alexander VI was not above killing them off and replacing them with a family member. This happened even in the cardinal chambers. He would have rival cardinals murdered just to claim their property for himself. He amassed wealth through sinister means and then used that wealth to live a life of luxury. He also did not believe in remaining celibate for God. He was often found having carnal relations with women and even fathered several illegitimate children. It's also been suggested that Alexander VI even had incestual relations with his own daughter. If there ever was a pope who should have been sentenced to hell, Alexander VI should have been it. Although there was one pope who was hated so much for the sins he committed that he was actually placed in a sort of hell. In Dante's Inferno, there's a pope who was relegated to the eighth circle of hell. His name was Pope Boniface VIII, and he sinned a lot. Boniface VIII was born Benedetto Cartani, and he was the pope from 1294 to 1303. Boniface made a lot of enemies, but his biggest one was King Philip IV of France. In 1302, Boniface VIII issued a papal bull that placed the kings of Europe and their armies under his control. Basically, Boniface made himself emperor of Europe under the name of God. His lust for power knew no bounds. This led to harsh pushback from the kings around the continent. Not only was Boniface VIII power hungry, but he used the armies and resources he had claimed for conquest of lands and to gain riches, two things that a pope was not supposed to covet. When Philip IV did not relent his power or give his army to Boniface VIII, he was excommunicated. When King Philip got wind of this, he and his allies sent their armies to Rome to force Boniface VIII to abdicate his papacy. Accounts vary from a single slap to the brutal beating of Boniface VIII when the French soldiers eventually captured him. But what we do know is that because of his sins, Boniface VIII was removed as the Pope and died only a month later. This brings us to Boniface VIII in hell. While he was the Pope, he became mortal enemies with Dante Alighieri. Boniface VIII did not like Dante's criticisms of the church, even though they were true. 
Boniface and his men forcibly removed Dante from the city of Florence and sent him into exile. Dante would not forget this, and when he wrote the Divine Comedy, he placed Boniface VIII in the eighth circle of hell. Another French writer named Francois Rabelais also relegated Boniface to hell in his works. His punishment there was to skim the scum off of soup pots for all eternity. These seven popes most definitely indulged in the seven deadly sins. They embodied everything that the Catholic Church told its congregation not to be. That being said, there were plenty of popes who lived pious lives and followed the teachings of God. If hell does exist, then these seven popes must definitely be there right now. Now check out how much power does the Vatican have? Or watch this video, the most evil pope in history, Alexander VI, the Devil Pope.